The Starkey Round Barn was built in 1902 by the Conrad Starkey family. Before coming to Webster County in Nebraska, the Starkey family had made their fortune in the Milwaukee area where they owned various business interests around the Great Lakes. Sometime around 1880, Conrad Starkey purchased 400 acres of land along the Republican River Valley, thanks to encouragement from his brothers-in-law, Gottlieb and Christian Rasser. It was on this land that the Starkey Round Barn was constructed. The Starkey Round Barn is the largest of its type in the world. It is 130 feet in diameter and the center silo is 65 feet high. With three levels, the barn contains over 40,000 square feet of space. The top level was for hay storage, the middle level for machinery and grain storage, and the basement was for livestock. The brick silo in the center was for feed storage. In addition to its unique design, one of the more interesting aspects of the barn is how it was built. The barn's framework is held together by tension and stress without any aid from nails or pegs. The 12 by 12 supporting timbers were shipped to Nebraska by rail from the Great Lakes region. Starkey Farms was a successful dairy until the herd contracted tuberculosis in the early 1920s. In 1929, at the foreclosure auction, the farm was purchased by Walter and Will Rasser. I think my first question for everyone is, uh, if you can think of just one thing that comes to your mind when you think about the barn and the Amboy area in general. Well, I bet I was born the, the closest to the barn. I bet you, well, were you born out here? Uh, you were. Two-story white frame house that was up here at the junction of the railroad and the highway. Uh-huh. And my dad worked for Amboy Milling, so. Um, oh yeah, tell us a little bit about the mill. That's. Well, there's a lot of history in the mill. And, yeah. Uh, I've had, that's where I earned my first quarter <laughs> on a Saturday afternoon. Of course, they worked six days a week, the whole thing, and they were sacking up chick scratch or something that came in 25 pound bags, and you had to weigh it, and then they had this wonderful little thing that was a wire, and you put around it, and you pulled this thing, and it curled all that wire up, you know, so the bag didn't leak, but, uh, and it was, remembers swimming in the mill race. I didn't learn to swim, they just threw me in. And the mill race was like up the road, north and North of the east. mill, north yeah. of the mill. Yeah, I've been up there. And then, uh, of course, the canal went clear up to the next road and there was a dam in Elm Creek up there. But. And what, uh, what year was this? Well, I was born in 31 and we left here probably in 43. So was I was in the 12. Late 30s. When we left. Uh, I was born in 1929. That was quite a vintage year. All the banks went broke and I came along. <laughs> That's kind of what my mom said. We lived south of Innovale <laughs> and uh, we had a house and barn across the line in Kansas. So really I was a Kansan back in those days and then my grandfather lived down the creek uh, uh, a quarter of a mile on the Nebraska side. I can't tell you the, 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 the year, but it was uh, early on when I was just a boy. We loaded up a load of wheat, my grandfather and I. We were buddies, of course. Uh, we loaded up a load of wheat and brought it down to Amboy to the mill, and we went home with a load of flour. Well, I remember a little bit about the mill also. Uh, of course, my parents say, they got all their flour there too, and I don't know, I must have been in high school before I had any store-bought bread. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you live? Uh, um, I lived uh, north of the golf course, mm -hmm. uh, up by the corner of the feedlot. Yeah. The thing I remember about the barn mm -hmm. is my dad would say, have you seen that round barn? It's been built and with no nails. You know, so amazing. And, uh, so we'd take the gravel road that was not used very often, and we'd come up to 136, and we'd drive down this way. and. We didn't come in, but we could see through the trees mm -hmm. the, the barn. 
And one of the purposes that my dad liked to come was he said the Rasser boys grew the best corn in the country. <laughs> and he liked to look at that corn. Wow. Well, I, we were talking about that a little bit. Uh, and, you know, they, I think, were some of the early ones that were fortunate enough to, to have some irrigation on their ground. And they had, they had a water right out of Elm Creek back in 34 wow. and another one in 39 wow. so they maybe were were you know benefiting from that in those years especially when you know in the 30s that would have been just a, a lifesaver the Nobody... barn was my playhouse oh okay <laughs> and i'm sure if the rasters knew what we were doing in there they'd have chased us off <laughs> i had a my mother is a twin and i have a twin cousin born three days before I was. And huh. his version of this story is going to be, Neil got me into a lot of trouble. And my version is, Floyd always got Neil Neither. into a lot of trouble. But we just um, used and abused it. To, I remember the, the green bins around the edge that they would uh -huh. just pull in and back up and shove it out yeah. the tailgate of it. And the biggest thing was all horses weren't compatible with the barn. Oh. When they would walk, it was hollow. Oh, it bothered them. It bothered them. Oh, yeah. And a lot of times they had to use a team that was from here, if you were yeah. doing silage or harvesting. You had to change teams before you could take it in. Do you remember the, um, the beets, the beet cellar? You know, under the driveway that goes into the top level, there's a huge root cellar. I mean, it's just massive, and it goes all the way back in the ground. And apparently, at some point, they grew some kind of big sugar beet type root mm. as part of the cattle feed. At least that's the story I've heard. There's two of them actually, and they they go the full length of that, and then there's there's those squares on top of yeah. the driveway vents yeah. where you could drop them in, and then you can see also there's some vents there too. <laughs> yeah. So was this a childhood sweetheart deal or something like that? Well, I, I'll, tell Pretty you, much. I'll tell a little story about that. Uh, we started going out together in high school um, in the summer, and we were supposed to go to the movies, and we decided to go to the baseball game instead, so that's where we were. and. Ron's parents needed the good car for some emergency, so they came and hunted us down and we had to switch cars so they could take the family car and we took the little Rambler for the rest of our date and we came out here to, to change things out and I, that was the first time I'd ever seen the barn up close. And oh. so he said, well, do you want to see the barn? And I said, well, sure I do because my dad had told me about it, and I was always imagining how many horses I could fit in there. It just seemed, it seemed to me like it was almost just made for that purpose. But anyway, so he took me out there, and we drove in, and we drove all the way around the inside of the barn. In the Rambler? In the Rambler, <laughs> and I was so impressed. I just was in awe. Well, was Walter and Will a true partnership, or did they uh, just kind of have their own thing? I knew they found you I, I don't know exactly. They they just basically I think they just farmed together. But um, they must have, they bought the Starkey property together because when they decided not to farm together anymore, they just they kind of just decided that Walter would take this part and Will would take that part. And so it was not real formal. But I think maybe they were both on the title at that time. And. It was not a not a hard. It was hard for them to quit farming together, but it wasn't hard to separate. You know. Because I remember going across the road to us, mm -hmm. and they'd be separating, and we and we were right before the pigs. We could have the skim milk. <laughs> <laughs> and once in a while, was it her name Lena? Yes, Will's uh, wife. Yes. yes. She would feel sorry for us, and she. Dip a little cream. <laughs> we nobody was looking. <laughs> put it back in the skim milk. <laughs> is there a history of the orchard? Well, mm. there is a little bit. Uh, 
this orchard, of course, we planted yeah. what's remaining. But we have that picture out in the long shed uh, that was from 1949, and I've blown it up. It's pretty good size now. Uh, and that has a well-established orchard in it. And um, I, I know that there's been people over the years that have told us that there was pretty much always fruit out here. An apple orchard? Apples, and then also pears, pears and peaches. I think they lost all the peaches mm -hmm. in an armistice day. Freeze, freeze and that was probably maybe 40 41 okay but the peaches had just started to bear and they were oh. what we would think of as a colorado peach you know, yeah. and of course your memory kind of fools you <laughs> once in a while but they lost all the peach trees they had all the innovations on this place that was available at the time yeah you know? yes i asked liz one time when we were here nobody had could figure out how after the 35 flood they could afford to hire cats and fill in all the holes and stuff and they were farming again in 36. Wow. And everybody else was sitting there waiting for the of course the little Equipment. trees were all coming up. Oh know. yeah. I hadn't Trump. thought about that that it would have ruined all those fields. Oh, yeah. But they huh. actually got land planes in and they yeah. were farming the next now the story goes that when the Starkeys got this tractor, it was one of the first steel wheeled tractors in the area. So they called up all the neighbors and said, hey, come on out and we're going to demonstrate our new tractor. And they took it down in the river bottom <laughs> and proceeded to get it stuck in the mud up to the hubs. <laughs> and I always wondered how they got it back out because it wasn't like you could call the neighbors up and say, hey, bring your 4020 down here and pull us, give us a pull. But that was the Starkeys. They were always showboating. There's the barn, and then this is the little ice house that's still here. My trees are about right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you can see clear up to where this is 136, but this was taken in 49, I think. There's orchards there, and of course this was Will's place up here on the hill. And this is the barn where they isolated the Starkey cattle when they found they had tuberculosis. Oh, yeah. They quarantined oh, them, yeah. <clears throat> and then they had to destroy the herd. And that, that was what really sealed their fate as far as losing the property and so forth. So. Do you know what they did with the condemned animals? I think they had to be destroyed. Uh, because in 22, in 1922, they had the record milk and butter producing cow in the state of Nebraska. Mm. And they traveled all over the country to buy up all this high-powered breeding stock. They were bidding against all these very affluent people like DuPonts and so forth. And so they probably contracted it, bringing those cattle in, because I'm sure there wasn't, there wasn't the things in place like we have now for inspections. And so forth. They just didn't have much to fall back on. And then they had borrowed, and the Aetna Life Insurance Company sued them uh, because they owed him money mm -hmm. and then uh, well actually I think the brothers passed two brothers passed away and that's what started all the foreclosure because they couldn't settle the estates we the barn was just a beautiful place we used it and uh, just lots of memories there if any of these stories has interested you or you'd like to see the Starkey Round barn yourself Please schedule a tour of the barn to see many of the original fixtures and learn more of the barn's history.